Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about side effects of NSAIDs in easy way. NSAIDs are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These drugs are mainly useful as analgesic agents where they reduce the pain sensation and they are also useful as antipyretic agents. They can reduce the body temperature and finally many of the NSAIDs can also act as anti-inflammatory agents. They can reduce the swelling that is associated with the pain. So NSAIDs are the widely prescribed drugs to control the pain as well as swelling as well as to reduce the body temperature. But these drugs can produce variable side effects when they are used for chronic periods. So today in this video we are going to see what are the different types of side effects that are possible by NSAIDs and how they are produced. NSAIDs are going to inhibit the COX pathway but many of the NSAIDs are going to inhibit both COX-1 enzyme as well as they are going to inhibit COX-2 enzyme. Among these which is mainly responsible for induction of pain, fever as well as inflammation. Here the COX-2 enzyme is the inducible form of the enzyme which is induced in the events of any inflammation or pyresis whereas COX-1 enzyme is constitutive that means this enzyme is always present and it is having some protective action at the particular organ. So by inhibition of COX-1 enzyme activity NSAIDs can produce few of the side effects and by inhibition of COX-2 enzyme we can observe anti-inflammatory, antipyretic and analgesic effects. But still COX-2 inhibition may lead to few of the cardiovascular complications. So COX-2 is not completely inducible. It is somewhat constitutive at few of the organs where the inhibition of this enzyme may lead to cardiovascular complications. Now COX-1 is the main constitutive enzyme. This enzyme is present at the various organs. One of the important organ is the stomach and second one it is present in the renal system and it is also expressed at the platelets. Now NSAIDs can inhibit the COX-1 enzyme activity at all these organs. By acting on the stomach they can produce gastric ulcers. By acting on the renal system they can produce renal impairment and by acting on the platelets they can produce some bleeding disorders. So all these are the side effects that are associated with inhibition of COX-1 enzyme activity. Even these side effects are more pronounced with inhibition of COX-1 enzyme but still they are observed with inhibition of COX-2 enzyme activity. At the gastric parietal cells proton as well as chloride ions are going to be released as HCl. So chloride ions can be directly secreted through the lumen whereas proton is going to be secreted through a proton pump. Now proton can be secreted for the exchange of potassium. This is the H plus K plus ATPase pump which is commonly known as proton pump. So by this way HCl is going to be released into the stomach which is going to be controlled by prostaglandins. Arachidonic acid is a C20 fatty acid which is going to be converted into prostaglandins such as PGE2 as well as PGI2. This conversion is mediated by COX-1 enzyme. Now the prostaglandins can act on prostanoid receptors such as EP as well as IP receptors which are expressed on non-parietal cells. Now by the action of PGE2 on EP receptors it can stimulate the release of bicarbonate as well as mucus which can reduce gastric acid secretion. In this way, the prostaglandins are having a protective action which are synthesized through COX-1 pathway. Now the NSAIDs can inhibit this COX-1 enzyme activity so that they can inhibit the release of bicarbonate as well as mucus which increase the secretion of gastric acid resulting in gastric irritation as well as ulceration. So NSAIDs can produce gastric irritation they can increase the abdominal pain, some dyspepsia and they can also increase the gastric ulceration. Even they can produce gastric bleeding because of their antiplatelet activity. Second side effect is the renal impairment. At the glomerulus two types of arterioles are present. This, this is the afferent arteriole which is the incoming arteriole and this is the efferent arteriole, outgoing arteriole. Now the two mediators like the PGI2 which is commonly known as prostacycline and angiotensin 2 these mediators can act on 
efferent as well as efferent arterioles respectively. Now the prostacyclin can act on the efferent arteriole so that it can produce vasodilatation and angiotensin 2 can act on the efferent arterioles so that it can produce vasoconstriction. Now because of these effects the components of the blood are more filtered and they can enter into the renal tubules. But for the sins of prostacyclin COX-1 enzyme is important which can convert the arachidonic acid such that it can be converted into prostaglandin I2. Now NSAIDs can inhibit the sins of prostacyclin by inhibition of COX-1 enzyme. So when this prostacyclin is not synthesized, it can reduce the filtration rate. In this way, NSAIDs can reduce the glomerular filtration rate. So this results in the renal impairment as well as some nephropathy in the patients. Third one is a cardiovascular side effects. Normally sodium as well as water can be excreted by this renal system. But the renal cells are more expressed with the COX-2 enzyme which acts as somewhat constitutive enzyme. Now the NSAIDs can inhibit this COX-2 enzyme activity. Thereby they can inhibit the filtration rate so that sodium as well as water are not excreted by renal system. So the sodium and water levels are elevated within the blood which increase the body volume thereby it can increase the blood pressure. Now one of the important effect of NSAIDs on cardiovascular system is increase in the blood pressure so they can increase the hypertensive stays in the patients. Similarly, NSAIDs can also increase the platelet aggregation. Again here COX-2 plays an important role. The arachidonic acid can be converted into prostaglandin I2 again by COX-2 enzyme. This PGI2 acts as a vasodilator. It can act on the IP receptors expressed on the vascular endothelium. Now PGI2 can act on IP receptors to produce vasodilatation which reduce the platelet aggregation. But in presence of NSAIDs, they can block this COX-2 pathway so that they can inhibit the sense of PGI2 resulting in vasoconstriction and this vasoconstriction can promote the platelet aggregation. So NSAIDs on chronic use, they can increase the platelet aggregation by inhibition of COX-2 enzyme activity which increase the risk of myocardial infarction as well as stroke in the patients. This is more pronounced with COX-2 selective NSAIDs. Few of the NSAIDs are completely selective such as silicoxib, but few of the NSAIDs are more selective to the COX-2 such as pyroxicam, which are going to increase the risk of cardiovascular complications. Fourth one is the bleeding. Just we have seen that arachidonic acid is going to be converted into prostaglandins, but this can also be converted into ender mediator thromboxane A2. And again, this conversion is mediated by COX-1 enzyme. This thromboxane A2 can act on the platelets. So the platelets are expressed with thromboxane A2 receptors. Now by the action of thromboxane A2 on these receptors, it can promote the platelet aggregation. A few of the NSAIDs such as aspirin can act as antiplatelet agents. And not only the aspirin, few of the NSAIDs can also block this COX-1 enzyme activity so that they can inhibit the sense of thromboxane A2, thereby they can inhibit the platelet aggregation. So when the platelets are not aggregated, they can increase the risk of bleeding. So hemorrhage is the another important side effect that can be produced by NSAIDs by inhibition of platelet activity. And aspirin can also increase the gastrointestinal bleeding along with gastric ulceration. Fifth one is the respiratory side effects. Arachidonic acid is going to be converted into prostaglandins such as PGE2 and PGI2 by the COX-2 pathway and some of this anecdonic acid can also be converted into ender mediators, leukotrienes by 5-lipoxenase pathway. Now few of the NSAIDs can block this COX-2 pathway so that 5-lipoxenase pathway is more pronounced resulting in the more production of leukotrienes. So this results in the accumulation of leukotrienes within the body. These leukotrienes can affect the respiratory system so when they are accumulated within the lungs, they can produce some bronchospasm which increase the risk of asthma in the patients. So NSAIDs should be carefully given in the asthmatic patients, particularly when they are prescribed for very longer periods. Particularly aspirin can produce aspirin sense to bronchospasm in the patients because of accumulation of leukotrienes. Sixth one is the hepatotoxicity. Few of the NSAIDs such as Estaminophen can be converted into some of the metabolites such as N-acetyl para by 
cytochrome p450 metabolism so this metabolite can affect the liver and it can produce some hepatotoxicity due to depletion of free thial groups seventh one central side effects anesthetics can also affect the central nervous system even they are acting peripherally particularly if you have the anesthetics such as aspirin can produce a set of side effects which are collectively called as salicylism aspirin can produce some dizziness in the patients headache vertigo and reeling sensation all these are because of disturbance in the vestibular system these central side effects are only observed with few of the anesthetics such as aspirin other side effects few of the anesthetics can also produce some skin rashes urticaria and even photosensitivity particularly drugs like mefenamic acid sulindac which are the acetic acid derivatives they can increase the skin rashes in the patients so these are the various common side effects that are produced by anesthetics so that's for today hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video